Good afternoon. Welcome to our celebration, our vigil mass for All Saints Day. Uh, our opening hymn, as was mentioned, is in the Gather Hymnal, number 790, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones, verses 1 and 2. Please stand. Ye watchers and ye holy ones, bright seraphs, cherubim and thrones, raise the glad strain, alleluia. Cry out, dominions, Christos powers, virtues, archangels, angels, choirs, alleluia. our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and your blood. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merit of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
a reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the full living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Our sponsorial song, Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, Lord this, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth in its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord.
Come to me, all you who are labor and burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, my family tells me when I was a little boy and people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? They said I would always say a fireman. <laughs> I, maybe that's what I do, I put out fires, but I, don't have, I have no memory of saying that at all. Uh, I know when I was in high school, I decided I had to figure out what I was going to major in college, and I loved English, English composition, English literature, so I said, well, I'm certainly going to major in English in college, and maybe I'll be an English teacher. Maybe that's what I want to be when I grow up. And then I got into college and uh, decided that um, what I really was called to do was to be a lawyer, and that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. And then when I got to be a lawyer, did that for a number of years, somebody said, are you doing what you really are meant to do in this life? Are you really, have you really found your fulfillment, your happiness, your peace, the plan of God? Or what do you really want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be a priest. And now after all this time, having just turned seven years old, I realized that what I really want to be when I grow up is not a fireman, not an English teacher, not a lawyer, not a priest. I want to be a saint. <laughs> uh, the great French novelist uh, and uh, philosopher, theologian, Leon Bloy said, if you don't become a saint, you've missed the whole point of life. That's the goal of all of us. Whatever we do, whatever is our vocation, whatever is our state of life, single or married, children or no children, uh, widowed or are not, divorced, separated, whatever it is, our number one vocation in life for all of us is to become a saint. And when I think back to how hard I worked uh, for my English degree, and when I think back to how hard I worked for my law degree, and when I think back to everything I went through, all the stuff I went through in seminary to become a priest, I figure it's got to be more than that to become a saint, right? If I had to do all of that for these vocations in life that ultimately are fleeting. What about becoming a saint? It, 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 it must be a really high standard. And it turns out it is a really high standard. Uh, we just heard the standard in, in today's gospel. It's called the Beatitudes. It's these uh, ways of living, ways of interacting with other people that show that we're, we have a heart for God and a heart for love. Um, for those of you who have watched the miniseries called The Chosen on the Life of Jesus, in season two, one of my absolutely favorite moments is when Jesus dictates the Beatitudes to his apostle Matthew. They're, they're sleeping, or Matthew's sleeping, he wakes him up in the middle of the night, it's pitch dark. And Matthew has been telling them that all the little sayings and things he has, they're all good. He said, but, but you need to have some kind of a spectacular opening to all of this. You just kind of get into it. And so Jesus wakes him up and he says, I'm ready for the opening. 
And then he proceeds to dictate to Matthew, starting, Blessed are the poor in spirit. And as he says this, the camera then brings Jesus to different people he's interacted with who exemplify each one of these qualities. It's absolutely magnificent. And I can't watch it without getting all teary-eyed to see the different people that Jesus has met who showed us each of these things to him. And when he finally gets down to the final one, those who are persecuted, that's the only time he doesn't have a vision as he looks at Matthew and says, and blessed are those when they insult you and persecute you and utter every evil against you falsely because of me. Looking at Matthew, rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. And Matthew kind of freezes. Of course, he's not seeing all these images. He writes it down. He finishes it and he says, this is good. This is good. And it's really a litmus test for us. And it's not a question of going to doing this for three years, like if you do a graduate degree, or four years if you do an undergraduate degree. This is like a, a lifelong mission for all of us. We gotta be poor in spirit every day. Poor in spirit doesn't mean being materially poor so much as it means being uh, not thinking I'm in control of my life or the universe. It's giving God permission to control your life. It's letting God be in charge. Thy will be done. It's what we say every time we pray the Our Father. We're praying for poverty of spirit. Those who mourn, yeah, we like to laugh and that's fine. We'll have our times of laughter. But those who are able to mourn when the situation calls for it, to have sorrow, compassion, empathy for somebody who's really hurting. Those who are meek, the ones that are humble, they're not walking around all the time broadcasting all of their achievements, but everything they do, they know it's a grace from God. They just know it. And they live that way. They exude humility and meekness. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they, they see evil in the world. They see wrongdoings happening. They see hurts happening, and they just don't sit back and say, I hope somebody does something about that. No. They get up and they do something. They see the problem, and they find a way that they can be engaged. Blessed are the merciful, right? When somebody hurts us, we want to hold a grudge. We don't want to reconcile. We want to write them out of the book of life. And the Lord says, be merciful. You've messed up a million times and I've forgiven you. Be merciful to those who have hurt you. Blessed are the clean of heart. Well, that's the ones that live, you know, they live pure for God. They live pure, pure in their life, pure in their physical being, pure in their sexuality. They're just, they're just pure about everything they do and they're single hearted in their love of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, the ones that try to find a way to bring peace and harmony where there's division and contention, and this is the world we live in. And then blessed are the, those persecuted for the sake of righteousness and insulted. When you do this, when people especially make fun of you for your religion, for your practice of faith, I can't believe you believe all that nonsense. That's just a bunch of old men that are telling you to do that. Uh, whenever you're persecuted for your faith, Take a deep breath and understand that's one of the Beatitudes and pray for that person. You can defend your faith. Sometimes we need to defend our faith, but don't, uh, but don't be ugly to them. Pray for them. Pray that, that they may have a conversion. Because the only reason you have faith is because God's giving you that gift. So that, that's the litmus test. So that means obviously we have to be a person of prayer. We can't do any of these things without being a person of prayer. We have to have this Stuff it's like it's like studying for a test every day for the rest of your life. I gotta come to God, the source of my energy and strength and power, the Holy Spirit. And then we need to be nice to people, kind to them, compassionate, caring, loving, charitable. This is this is it. So, uh, unlike high school, which I uh, got out in four years, 
I like college, which I got out of in four years. My brother took seven years. He did the long plan. Unlike law school, which took three years, and seminary, which took four and a half years, uh, now on, I'm not counting the years till I can say, I made it. Check, 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 no. Every day for the rest of our lives, we're called to be in rehearsal for sainthood. Rehearsal for sainthood. So at the end of our lives, close our eyes, and the Lord says to us, well done, good and faithful servant. You had some bumps in the road, but you kept on plugging away. You did a lot of good. Welcome into the kinghood, beloved saint of God. Let's pray for the grace of that. And for those who are already in heaven and have made it, we thank them for paving the way, showing us how to do it. We don't have to... We don't have to be martyred in war and combat like St. Sebastian. We don't have to uh, do you know, enter a cloistered convent like so many uh, of, the, of the religious women saints. We need to be safe in our life with our family, our spouses, our children, our neighbors, our friends, our community of faith. That's where we're called to live the Beatitudes. And we have the saints in heaven praying for us to do that. So, Lord, uh, please help us as we answer the question, what do you really want to be when you grow up? Let me answer you, Lord, I want to be a saint. Please stand now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's immense love for us, we bring our prayers and deeds to God, our Heavenly Father. For the Pilgrim Church on Earth, may God help us grow in holiness as we endeavor to become saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials and those in authority, may the Lord guide them in governing with integrity, with special attention toward the powerless and the vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who lack faith and who are seeking, may God open their hearts to the saving love of his Son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this gathering of the faithful, may Jesus' love empower us in offering strength and courage to one another in living as the disciples of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Toussaint Dallier, and especially for those who are in our Book of Life, may God reward their faith as they worship Him in joy with all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together let us now recite our uh, family prayer, which is in the inside cover of the gathering, the front inside cover. 
loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Prom Succor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this for Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Mopsacor, hasten to help us. Mother Henry and Leo, pray for us that we may be the Holy Family. And let us pray also for all of our family members, buried in various places, various tombs, various cemeteries, many of which we'll be visiting on tomorrow on All Saints Day. We pray for their eternal rest. We pray again for the, all the names listed in our Book of Life. We pray for an end to the war and violence in Ukraine and for peace there. We pray for a respect for life throughout our world, the dignity of all life. And we pray for a restoration of godly values in our world. Let us call upon Our Lady and ask her intercession with us and for us as together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may you, O Lord, hear the prayers which we offer and make in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the ushers to now come forward for the collection. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with a multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis Savior, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by my teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a final peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, for family members or anyone who asks you, the Mass is tomorrow for All Saints Day, 6.30 a.m., 8 a.m., 9.15 is the school Mass, where all the children dress as saints, which I love. 12 noon is our final Mass, but we are also uh, co-hosting an outdoor Mass at 3 o'clock at Mary Cemetery, right in front of All Saints Mausoleum, Archbishop Bainer will be the celebrant, and uh, some of our clergy will be involved with that. So. Uh, that cemetery, uh, Mary Cemetery, Lakeland, for all those cemeteries are in our parish. So I always say we have a lot of dead people in our parish. I uh, invite you, if you have uh, not already done so, to write in the names of your deceased loved ones in our Book of Life, which is to the side of the baptismal font. We'll pray for them at every Mass in the month of November. Uh, you may know that we moved the statues of the Immaculate Heart, Sacred Heart, and St. Joseph from in front of the whole church to the prayer garden. Uh, we had three pedestals, two were the same size and one was a little short. And so we had that pedestal made. I wanna thank CJ and his workers. The new pedestal is installed today. It's beautiful. The statues are refurbished. Either today or some other day soon, go take a look at the statues because they look great and we will bless them tomorrow after the children's mass. The Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, Prowl about the world, seeking the moon of souls. Amen. Please join me in singing verses 3 and 4 of number 790 in the uh, Gather Hymnal. He watches any holy ones, verses 3 and 4. Respond, ye souls, in endless rest. Ye patriarchs and prophets, blessed. Amen. Hey.